Sir Isaac Newton noticed the effect of spin on a ball during the trajectory whilst observing a tennis match. This observation then helped the British mathematician Benjamin Roberts to explain deviations in trajectories of musket balls in terms of the Magnus effect. In this video, we'll be explaining the Magnus effect, specifically in table tennis, which is very similar to the observations that Newton made. So, as you can see, when the ball is hit, there's a slight deflection. As you see in the slow motion, just there, there's a slight deflection in the curvature of the moon on the trajectory of the path of the ball. Then we flip it around and we can show the backspin and the topspin of the ball as well, which is the effect of spin as well. If we replay it again on slow-mo, as you can see, the player on the left has to step in to slice it as the ball is moving in the air. And this is what we call the Magnus effect. We will now explain the derivation behind the Magnus effect. The Magnus effect occurs due to the difference in velocity between the top and the bottom of the ball. As you can see here, the top, the ball spins against the direction of airflow, so we add its rotational velocity to the airspeed. At the bottom, the reverse is true. As the ball flies, a turbulent boundary layer forms just around its surface. This interacts with the laminar flow further away from the ball create a pressure differential, shown by delta p. To find the magnitude of the force exerted by the pressure differential, we first need to consider the sphere as a cylinder of infinite length. This effectively reduces the problem from three dimensions to two. We then need to substitute our values found in the diagram into the Bernoulli equation. I've ignored any terms that relate to gravitational potential energy of the fluid because the flow is horizontal. We first find this expression shown here. We can then move from this side to this side and cancel p. Simplifying this expression gives us delta p is equal to 2 rho, that is the density of the air, multiplied by v, the air speed, multiplied by vr, the rotational velocity of the ball. The final force exerted, the unit length, due to the pressure delta p. We first need to find the cross sectional area of the unit length that it cuts. This is given by pi r, half the circumference circle. Multiplying this and subbing in values to delta p, we can obtain the expression for L, the force per unit length, as so. Vr can be further simplified to omega r, omega being the angular velocity and r being the radius of the circle. This gives us our final result. There are many limitations to this method, as we've assumed that the flow is lambda, apart from the turbulent boundary layer, when in fact it isn't. This method only really gives us the fact that there is a force rather than the magnitude of one. Using our derivation, force therefore, we've shown that it travels upwards as there's an extra pressure at the bottom of the cylinder. This is what causes the ping pong ball to deflect from the trajectory when it's spun by the player. 